Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, February 26, 2016, and this is Gersh's Gaming, episode 11 of Diamond or Rage Quit. And to be completely honest, guys, this week we're a lot closer to the Rage Quit than we are to the Diamond. But we're still in Gold League, so... Technically, we're closer to Diamond than we were last month. Anyway... Alright, so today we are going to be looking at a PVT game that I played, talking about uh, scouting, uh, early defense, and what I call kind of conservation of actions. Uh, this is a, uh, an idea that I think I've talked a little bit about before, in that your ability to execute actions uh, in a timely manner, so actions per minute in the StarCraft parlance, is a resource, a limited resource that you have while playing, and that what you can do in the game is is limited by this. Um, because of that, if you have a low APM, like I do, you have to be very efficient with your actions, especially when you are on the defensive and need to manage several things at once like protecting your probes while defending, while continuing to build units. Those three things together, it's just three things, right? Protect the workers, manage your units, make more units. But that ends up being much more difficult than originally meets the eye. So, having said that, we're going to jump into the game, and I will just stop talking and show you <laughs> what I mean here. Alright, so, here we go. Uh, Protoss versus Terran. I'm going to stick on the Gersh cam for the beginning of this, and let's see what happens here. I'm even going to keep the production tab off. We're just going to take a look. So this is my standard opener with Terran, in that I'm going Gate, Gas... Expand. Also go to Scout. There's the core. Second gas. Uh, the expansion is up. Transfer probes. Robo coming out. There we go. There's a Reaper that comes in and attacks. Honestly, I don't think he gets anything accomplished. If we take a look on the... Uh, Units killed. Nada. Um, so go me. Good Reaper defense. And then the reason why I get the fast Robo is for uh, fast observers. Um, the reason why I get the fast observers is the... T of the two main ways that Terran can very, very rapidly <laughs> sort of ruin your day as a Protoss player is Widow Mines, Cloaked Banshees, and Liberators. An Observer prevents the Widow Mines from really doing a lot of damage. They can typically only get off one shot before they die. Cloaked Banshees allows the, um, the Observer allows you to see them and defend against them fairly easily as well. Here we come in here. Now, Liberators, that's a problem, and you'll see in a moment what happens. Actually, right now. So here we have it. Two Liberators. I'm going to slow it down a little bit here. And as you see, Liberators, one shot, probes, and they are about as efficient in taking down probes as oracles are. That was 15 probes in not very much time. Here's the other issue. See how he's out of range right now of the um, the pylon here? So, this is, this is perhaps something to tweak. Liberator push comes in at about the 5 minute mark. Um... So you have to have the defense up and running by then. I'm going to switch to the everyone cam so we can actually see both liberators at this point. Now, the Terran player has 
done a one base wall off. Um, I don't know what that's indicative of, right? Because well, we'll come we'll come back to that particular issue. Um, so I have to figure out a way to take these guys down. Now they're far enough away, sort of outside my base, that getting cl um, getting close enough to fire at them is very difficult. And you'll see this area right here is overlapping Liberator fire, so I can't stand there to attack them, um, or I will get completely annihilated. Which is exactly what I do. <sighs> Losses tab. 1450 resources to zero. So, a lot of this is tactics, right? You need to come in and approach this from, like, this side here. So that way only one liberator is shooting you at a time. Now, in addition, we've got some additional problems. Warp gate is finished. Um, and I'm just now transitioning my gateways into warp gates. Um, the Viking is honestly kind of a non-issue. The issue with Liberators here being that you have to have... You have to be able to see exactly where these um, rings are that they can shoot in, because otherwise you just walk right into a hail of fire, right? Coming up here, shooting the Viking, that's fine. You know, in the sense that the Liberators are still two-shotting me. Look at this guy. He's got 11 kills. This guy's got 10. And this Photon Overcharge is still too far away. Now, I want to try something here real quick. I want to go into the Options menu and see if additional team color textures... Uh, it says this requires a restart. But I'm wondering if maybe some of these things can help. Because right now, especially in the middle of a game, right, when, you know, things are, are really kind of uh, intense and in the moment, I couldn't see these rings at all. And, I mean, you can see they're, they're pretty faint against this white background here. So I'm going to play around with some of the, the texture and color settings to see if maybe there's... a uh, better way to handle situations like this. So, I want to stop here, talk about a couple of different things. So I said at the beginning, observers are good against cloaked banshees, because the observers can follow the banshees, and then you can have your stalkers chase them off. Observers are also good against widow mines, because they'll be able to spot the widow mine, and again, they get off maybe one shot before, you know, stalkers, adepts, what have you, can take them out. But against liberators, observers don't do very much. But, by contrast, a photon cannon? Well, that might do a little more. But, at the same time, Photon Cannon requires a much greater expenditure of resources in this point of the game. Right? For Photon Cannon, you would need uh, a Forge, and then at least one Cannon per Mineral Line. Okay, so that's 450 resources. 150 for the Forge, 150 for Cannon 1, 150 for Cannon 2. By contrast, building a robotics bay, a robotics facility, and getting two observers, the robo costs 200 minerals, 100 gas. Each observer costs 25 minerals, 75 gas. So in total, that's 500 resources versus 450 to get a robo and two observers. So on the outset, it seems like building the Photon Cannon is cheaper, but Photon Cannon is a dead-end tech path. But it's also a tech path that I eventually need, right? I eventually need a forge. 
because especially against Terran, let me put it on the everyone cam here real quick and find like a, a marine. So here you go. So Terrans, I think more than any of the other races, because they typically have so many attacks or attack so quickly. Like, getting armor upgrades versus Terran, I think, is very strongly the move to go. Especially, like, Terran infantry, bio balls, things like that. Um, Marines attack very quickly, almost twice per second. Marauders, does he have any Marauders? No. Um, but Marauders, um, their rockets that they fire, they fire them in pairs. So armor's twice as effective against them, because it that reduces the damage of each rocket. Let's go back over here. So I need the robo facility. But I also need a forge. And I'm wondering if maybe it makes sense to try and squeeze in a forge maybe after the robo facility like go robo forge and then drop some cannons the other option is i could move the pylon my first pylon to like here but then i'm putting like my gateway and cybernetics core like behind my mineral line instead of next to it which makes things i think a little more difficult to get things logistically moved around in the early game now at this point now, I, I, having said that, pylon placement is obviously something I have not really gotten a solid handle on yet. Because you look here, the pylon placement's a little bit random. And, and I don't think that's bad, but it's also not necessarily good, right? So I've got a pylon here, which is good placement if I'm again to keep my buildings on the edge and provide some protection to my workers but liberators can completely outrange a pylon that's placed here and even if I placed another pylon here like like what I've done down here and then I have pylons on both corners of the mineral line photon overcharge still won't hit either of these guys so I, I could like drop a pylon here, but again, then I'm just placing a pylon solely for defensive purposes. Right now, frustratingly, I can afford it, right? I'm not spending my money properly at this point either because my conservation of actions, as we talked about before, I'm focused on, oh my God, I've got two liberators in my base what on earth do I do to correct that? And I'm thinking I need to get stalkers, and I need to... I, I eventually send these probes off here, um, and I set up an expansion. Yeah, you can see I've already purchased it. Um, I'm not thinking really intently about my macro. I'm thinking about surviving. And my macro, as such, is suffering. The other issue here is, if I knew that Liberators were coming, right, I would just start choking this area with Stalkers to hell with teching up, right? But, I run into this wall problem again. Which is, in the early game, against Protoss, against Zerg, you can send out a scout probe and get an idea of what they're doing based on how many gas they have, what initial buildings you're seeing, etc. We've talked about that before, right? For example, uh, early scout on a Zerg, if you see extractor, spawning pool, no expansion, the Zergling rush is on its way already, right? Or almost on its way already. But I can't scout with a ground unit against Terran unless I can break through this wall. So what are some ways to mitigate that? And to be honest, the answer is I don't know. I feel like I'm flying blind against Terran for the first several minutes until I can either get a sentry and hallucinate a phoenix to go down here. Option one. Option two is to get a warp prism and do uh, a harassment attack with, like, 
adepts or stalkers or something like that, but given the recent nerf to adepts, I don't feel like an adept drop is very effective against Terran at all. Or, to build a Stargate, get some area units, maybe, I don't know, fly in with some Phoenix or something like that. But I feel like air units are a... I feel like Robo is the safest tech path against Terran. Because... I, I feel like going air against Terran makes you very vulnerable, because Marines just put out such a huge amount of damage and um, can be pumped out so rapidly that if you're like, here come Oracles and Phoenixes, the Marines will just rip them apart. Likewise, um, well, so, Robo, I think, is a safe tech path because you can get Immortals, you can get Colossi, you can get dis Disruptors, None of which actually helped me come to think of it against the three early all-in type attacks that I'm uh, facing, which is the Liberators, the Cloaked Banshees, and the Widow Mines, with the exception of having the Observers. So here's another thought. Do I need two Observers, or can I just have one Observer that maybe like patrols back and forth between my two bases and send the second observer to the Terran base to see what he's up to. Now in this game, I don't think that would have helped a whole lot. Let's go back a bit and see when that second observer comes out. Oh, here we go. So let's go to the everyone cam. No, so at this point, by the time the second observer is made, the Liberators are already here. So I don't think that really helps. And I don't want to send the first observer over there, because at this timing, right when the Liberators are coming in, well, these could just as easily be medevacs with... Um, with Widow Mines on them. They could just as easily be Banshees. They could be just about anything. So, let's let's get into the tweaks here. First off, I think these Stalkers should be back here. Because, again, with the different attacks that I'm worried about, this, this is the vector that enemies will come in. Either here, or here. Honestly, he should have brought the Liberators up from this angle. I think that would have been a little bit smarter, given the distance between our two bases, but whatever. Stalkers here, other Stalkers here. Might have been able to get a few free shots before the Liberators actually set up. But having said that, I only have three Stalkers. I'm you know, way behind on army supply. He's way behind on worker supply, because that's what he's sacrificing in order to do this attack. The chrono-boosted stalker, good. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna think more about placing a pylon here. Um, versus having pylons at the front of my base. I think this is okay, because I just need a spot to put production buildings. Um, but putting putting one pylon on the edge for building production, and then another pylon behind... And, and maybe part of it also has to do with just, depending on the map, is going to depend on where the pylon placement goes a little bit. So that's, uh, that's something else to think about. But... Um, I'm going to go ahead and accelerate. Um, I do eventually fight this attack off. I get the right tactics, which is a critical mass of stalkers. Having the warp in helps. Um, the secondary base also kind of helps. Um, so we'll go ahead and show how this ends. 
Um, but I mean, at this point, I've basically lost the game, right? I think maybe at this point he's kind of wondering why I haven't conceded. <laughs> because I'm stubborn, that's why. So now he's got a third Liberator in here. And you see right here, all of these Stalkers are only being shot at by one of the Liberators. That's good. If I had moved here... I'd be shot at by two. Can you guys... I'm wondering if you guys can even see that on the video. Anyway. Alright. Making more stalkers, making more stalkers, making more stalkers. And this is this is the right way to do it, is to work your way in through one hail of stalker fire. And through one liberator fire at a time. But at this point, you know, how far behind am I? My god, look at the number of resources I've lost. And now he's coming in with, honestly, a pretty tiny attack force. Right? Couple of liberators. Couple of tanks. And, uh, it's enough to kill me. Uh, because I've lost so many resources already. And, in doing this... Here's another thing. This is a bit of a tech fail on my part. <coughs> I was sitting looking at, and I had a huge amount of gas coming in because <laughs> the gas workers, right, were um, uh, the only ones able to continue working while I was getting shot at. So I had a ton of gas, so I was like, well, I'll transition into Archons. And I realized I had never built a Twilight Council because, again, my conservation of actions, focusing on how to deal with the attack that was coming in, had no way not no way I just completely forgot oh my gosh I need to improve my tech period and never built a twilight council if I had had blink this upcoming fight here might have been a little bit different because I could have blinked down off of here and then attacked this from the flank but instead I have siege tanks I mean, the Marines, so what, but... He's got good spotting with that Viking. Um, and my forces... Yeah, you can see I'm just trying to, to get in and around him, and I just can't. I'm kind of wondering if I conceded too early, but, I mean, he took out this pylon, which is powering the gateway. Um, I have stalkers over here that i am apparently forgotten about. I don't know. I mean, I had no, uh, I had no army at this point, so yeah, I probably lost. Um, but yeah, that was. There was a lot of rage um, after this particular game. <laughs> um, as I said, this this one brought me closer to rage quit uh, because the combination of liberators and siege tanks. I feel is so easy to pull off and so frustrating to play against. Not... It's, it's much harder to defend it than it is to use it, I think. And because of that, yeah, I just really, really raged when playing against it. Uh, and, um, that's that. So, <clears throat> that's where we are right now. Um, again, going to work on a couple of those small changes, try and, uh, try and have better defense, so that way I can actually make it to a mid-game or late game where I end up doing a lot better early game continues to be my biggest weakness in StarCraft 2. Um, having said that,
uh, the journey continues, right? So hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Please leave a comment if you got any comments. Let me know what I, uh, you think I'm doing right. Let me know what you think I'm doing wrong. Please subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to get 100 subscribers on the channel so that way I can actually rename uh, the URL uh, youtube.com slash gaming. That requires 100 subscribers. So please do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get all the episodes and we'll be able to share it around much more easily. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. GG. Cheers.